Hello. When I'm introduced to new friends, I like to say, hi, I'm Cassie Brown, and I'm a hugger. That usually gives you about three seconds to decide whether you're in or you're out. And now I realize in this format, it's challenging, but I'm also a creative problem solver. So I'm going to need some help. You huggers in the room, where are you at? Yes, I knew you were my people. You were here, you were here. Hands up, right? Hands up. Little tight squeeze. Mm, yes. So it's on, right? I love people. I am also all in on life. Surprise. I'm an eternal optimist. And any bets on whether I'm a half glass empty or half full kind of gal, right? If you're betting, play the lotto tonight because you're going to win, right? I also believe that we all have a journey of impact. And I'm going to invite you on that journey with me today as we take a look at our priorities in life and how we spend our time. Because what that opens up is a little bit of reflection. And when we reflect, here's your warning, I get a little uncomfortable, right? We might have some feelings, might laugh, we might cry, we're going to get emotional, right? All right? So I have a question. Are you all in and ready to dive into this journey of impact? Yes. I am a mom of four, married to my high school sweetheart. And when my kids were little, they used to ask me all the time, Mom, why do you always end every conversation that you have with someone on the phone with, I love you? They were especially concerned when these people were not their dad. <laughs> but no worries. It's because our experiences in life shift our perspective in the way that we show up in the world. When we're small and we learn how to ride a bike and we fall off, we scrape our knee, but we learn to get back up. When we have that first pet or that little puppy, we're so excited. And then the reality that we have to keep this thing alive, the responsibility of it. And love. Have you been in love? Is it a roller coaster where it gets high and we get those little butterflies, the loop de loops, and then it'll get low and a little depressing? Yeah. I still remember the day vividly, the first time I ever set eyes on my husband. I'm going to walk you through it. So imagine your favorite movie soundtrack playing in your head. The clouds part and the sun shines through. And there's little circles dancing on the sidewalk because he's wearing a blue mesh Chargers jersey from his Pop Warner football team. Yes, yes. He was the new kid. We were in seventh grade, and everyone loved the new kid. But there's another day that stands out in my life that impacted and why I'm here today. It truly serves as a domino effect of why I'm standing on this stage. September 24th, 2011 is the day I'll always remember because we had just moved from Florida to Georgia. We were settling into our new home and our new neighborhood. We had three kids at the time, but I promised my fourth little girl who's here with me today that I would let you know she's here. She just wasn't born yet. So I take the three little kids to our new neighborhood fall festival, and we spend the afternoon getting our faces painted. We vote on our favorite chili recipe. We win prizes. We play games. And that was the last normal day of our lives as we knew it. Because the next morning, I woke up to my husband having a grand mal seizure. And a couple hours later, in the ER, with the doctor on call explaining that there was a mass on Adam's brain. Allogo dendroglioma. I've spent over a decade learning how to pronounce this diagnosis. I could have lived my whole life without this word in my vocabulary, but I'm grateful for it because it gave us a perspective shift at a young age of 30 years old to realize what is really important, who we loved and how we spent our time. Our priorities shifted to kids and family as the top priority. We spent years at the ball fields on the weekends, Thursday through Tuesday for some tournaments, 
My oldest son plays baseball. My middle two plays lacrosse. And there's baby Farah. So she does make an, experience, uh, an appearance. She was there on the sidelines cheering everybody through. What I realized through all of this is when you're sitting across from lawyers at 30 years old, signing documents that plan out the remainder of your life. And even though my husband Adam was the one with the diagnosis, I wasn't promised we're guaranteed tomorrow. Every moment matters. So the way that we spend our time matters. Ronnie Ware is an author who is a caregiver at the end of life. She wrote the book, The Five Regrets of the Dying, where her patients essentially shared with her their regrets and what they wish they had been able to do in their life. And these are the top five. I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not a life that others expected of me. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I had stayed in touch with my friends. I wish I had let myself be happier. I wish I hadn't worked so hard is where we're going to go deeper today. It sparked a mission in me, and I realized when I rebuilt my business and my company that I wanted to not only create that freedom of a lifestyle for me and my family, but others deserve the same thing. That's what we consult, and that's what we empower other businesses to do. When we slow down enough and we take a look at our time, let's see where it goes. Here is the average of day. We know we're going to spend about eight hours sleeping, hopefully. Wouldn't that be right? great if that was a reality, right? And then we shift eight hours over to working. And then we look at just eating and getting ready or planning for the day and getting supplies and cleaning up, housework, just day-to-day -day life, right? But wait up. You have 0.62 hours left over to do whatever you want with yourself, but we have kids and we have pets. And then there's a national average of 2.8 hours. Are we going to give up binging on Netflix? Where is our time going? A third of our lives are spent working. So that is our opportunity. We've been conditioned to fit all of the rest of our life into the nooks and crannies of whatever is left over. But what if we could have and adjust to a reality with an extra two days a week? What if we could flip the script and have a four-day weekend and a three-day work week? Would that be cool or what? 104 extra days a year? Can I get an amen? Yeah. It all started like today with a conversation, right? A simple idea where I was like, I think I'm going to take Fridays off. I had a conversation with my friend. I called him up and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to take Fridays off. He said, congratulations. That's, that's just incredible. I've adjusted to a three-day work week. And he stopped me right then and there. I was listening. Here's a man, right? Nothing against you fellas, but seriously. Here's a guy saying he works three days a week. And then the light bulb went off. Decide, declare, do has become a mantra since my husband's original diagnosis. We had to shift. We had to move quickly. I had to be adaptable. And I kind of like did a ripple effect in every other area of my life. The minute that he said he had a three-day work week, it became possible for me. I want that same possibility for you. So let's plant the seed. Then I took the five, the four, and a three, continuous and perfect action. I'm going to walk you through it. I implemented and adapted the plan I moved to a three-day work week, and I still continue to adjust and improve. The truth is, traditional work weeks are not the best for everyone, not even, not even the companies and our teams and ourselves and our families. There's a better way because it leads to burnout and poor work-life balance, compromised mental health. The great resignation of 2020 brought light to this where 47 million Americans voluntarily left their job. That is still happening today, but it peaked out last year at 50.5 million. 52% are burnout, and 66% admit they have poor life balance. But 100% of us are human, and I don't have to quote a source for that. <laughs> life is more than work. One in six Americans are caregivers. That's 22% of our workforce. One in six children are diagnosed with disorders 
that can affect their lives. 40% of our workforce is parents. Freedom and flexibility isn't just for my family. A CBS News poll shows that 54% of other families are touched and affected by cancer. Let me share with you Parkinson's law. Work will expand into the container that it is given, which means if we have a lot of time, we're going to take a lot of time. But if we shift our focus, that our productivity actually increases. How our brains actually work, it's beautiful. It's already in our DNA just waiting for us to say yes. 20 to 90 minute increments is the sweet spot. So we've got a four, four to five hour a day period where we're operating at peak capacity. But are you stopping at four or five day, four or five hours? Or are you pushing yourself over the limit, past, right? Some of us work eight, nine, 10, 14 hour days. 20 to 25 hours is the peak. This, I'm gonna warn you here, is where it starts to get emotional because it kind of ticked me off. In 1930, the 40 hour work week became the standard, and it's pretty much the same almost 100 years later. Despite technological advances, increases in capacity for processes and systems, and even in 1933, the Senate actually approved a 30 hour work week, but it didn't make it pass for others, and we haven't heard about it yet. There's a paradigm shift that needs to start happening, releasing that status quo. Longer hours do not necessarily lead to increased productivity. We just accepted it, and we're paying for it. Before the pandemic of 2020, globally, we were already losing $1 trillion because of depression and anxiety. 2022, $322 billion lost just because of turnover and burnout. What we need is more win-win-win scenarios for the companies, for the families, for the employees to increase productivity, to increase profitability, and decrease turnover. Three focus days where we can be intentional, efficient, and effective. My husband had to explain to me what working for the weekend is. Apparently, it's something in corporate America <laughs> where people... <clears throat> where people start to have stress and anxiety on Sunday because they have to go to work on Monday, and then they wish the week to Friday, right? Why? When we instead could have four full days to recover, run errands, relax, recenter, and recalibrate. Yeah? Are you ready to take the leap? Let's see what this looks like. Here's an example of my work week. I chose to have Mondays and Fridays off and focus on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I did give myself a little wiggle room because I'll be transparent here. I don't always knock this out of the park. I still struggle. Sometimes I get some creep into Mondays and Fridays. But if it brings me joy, if it deepens relationships, and if it moves my mission forward, it gets to go on there. I get to do it. This created for me more travel with my family. Coffee every morning with my dad who lives with us and my husband, Adam. He insisted on in being this photo so you guys all could see who he is. I got to read more. I made it a goal. I wanted my kids to see me with a, a, a book in my hand more than a phone. And my daughters love to read now and go to the library. I actually made a personal goal to lose 50 pounds and was able to do it because I had more time. I got to include myself and the people that I serve. For our team and our business, we were like, okay, this is working. Let's give them the same option. Let them prioritize their family's needs, make their own schedule. We stopped having meetings to have meetings, and we created flexible systems that we use in our own business and for our clients. It's been incredible for us. We accomplish more in less time. We prioritize and empower, and it's increased creative white space, which is absolutely necessary for innovation. I'm going to take you through really quickly some examples that are not entrepreneurial businesses. These are brick and mortars who have done the same with three-day work week. Chick-fil-A in Miami wanted to support their managers and give them flexibility with a three-day work week. They got 429 applications in the first week with 100% employee retention. Tyson Foods shifted their workforce, their plant, to a 27-hour work week, three days a week, but paid them full-time and benefits. Their goal was to be the number one local resource, and they accomplished it. Mamo is a restaurant in Norway. Restaurant industry is known for its burnout, right? They did a step-down approach, a five, a four, a three, 
people were more happier and more creative, and they still had 100% staff, staff retention. This is baby steps into the future because corporate America is starting to pick up on it. The last two years represented the world's largest four-day work week experiment. Now, they're not to three, but it's a start. 91 companies participated in the UK, US, and Ireland. 92% of them kept the condensed work week, and 15% of workers said, hell no, I'm not going back, right? <laughs> Keep moving forward, right? This is a comment from the researchers. We think there's a lot here that will motivate other companies. Yes! More companies are picking it up, and they are moving to a condensed work week. Buffer, for example, saw 91% productivity, and there's other heavy hitters who are taking up the mantle and carrying the charge. Himalaya's app lists over 110 companies who have done this. Essentially, if you were a runner in 1954, this is the equivalent of our four-minute mile. Before Roger Bannister completed that run in less than four minutes, everyone would have said it was impossible. It's impossible until it isn't. Remote, virtual, and condensed work week, we are essentially living in the days of us breaking that four-minute mile. But we have to keep going. Hold the vision for the future and create a blended, fulfilled future that benefits all of us. It's not just for me and my family. It's not just for the ones who have struggled. Where you are today, you have the freedom to choose how you live from moment to moment and what charge you're going to take in your next steps. Entrepreneurs, corporations, teams, and all of the talent that support them, we touch every single sector of the world. Our loved ones, when they are cared for and supported, the burden is off of us and we feel lighter. We all win when we all win. So my challenge and reminder for you today is to make time for yourself, to make time for your family, to live your life with no regrets and ask yourself, not not in a thing where it's like, no, Cassie, that's not going to work for me. How can it work for you? How can it work for your team? What do we pave the path for future generations in our children? Thank you.